as we all trust the Lord to come in a mighty way, in a special way. It starts off with the declaration. It's about God moving. So if we must see revival and the revival that will continue, we better cling. 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 So that new life can be new life. Hallelujah. We thank God for another opportunity to share his word. And let's start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you so much for this day that you've graciously given us. We don't take it for granted that we have the peace and the opportunity to share your word. And so, Lord, as we share this word, we pray that your presence be with us, guide us and lead us in every word that we speak. And may this word find lodging in the hearts of the hearers. And they'll be changed to the form and likeness of Jesus Christ. And together, we'll honor your name and glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. My name's Pastor Isaac Muriuki of Christo Church Umoja. And again, it's a joy to be before you this hour to share the word of God with you. We, in our last sharing, we saw that today it's become rare to see the works of God that Jesus promised. He said, Greater things shall we do because he goes to our Father. And the, the Bible also promised us that we shall cast out demons, we shall, we, we shall lay hands on our sick and they'll be healed. But we find that so much of that has, is no longer observed in the churches today. And we're wondering what could be the reason? What could have happened? And we were observing in our last meeting that there's a possibility that we no longer honor God as used to be honored in the days past. And this is evident if, if in the way we attend our services. In the way we go to church is one of the signs on how we, uh, we show honor to our God. And in our last sharing, we show that in the times of old, the people of old would look forward to the morning when they would be waiting at the gate, at the door of the tent of prayer, the tent of meeting, where they would enter with the rejoicing and they would really have the, enjoy the presence of God with them. And the Bible says for sure that God honors those who honor him and those who dishonor him, he will rightly esteem. And today, we want to continue about uh, on our topic about waiting at the door, waiting at the gate of the altar of God. And today we are going to look at uh, the reasons. Why is it necessary to wait at the door of the altar of God, the door of the church? Why is it important? What is it, why is it important that you should be found early there, even before the appointed moment of opening or starting the service? The Bible is very explicit about it, and we're going to look at one or two things that will help us understand. One of the reasons is that we are soldiers. We are not, when we say we Christians, we are soldiers. This is well put in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, chapter 2, sorry, and verses 3 and 5. Uh, Timothy was being advised by Paul and says, Endure suffering along with me as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. We are like Timothy, we are soldiers. And many of us sing, we are quick to sing, I'm a soldier in the kingdom of the Lord, and we, we, but sometimes, often, we do not reflect on what it means to be a soldier. And so, uh, Timothy was being told, soldiers don't get tied up, don't get tied up in the affairs of the civilian life, for they cannot please the officer who enlisted them. I have come across a few people who have been in the savage uh, disciplined forces. And uh, we privilege it even to have some in our congregation. And one of the things that is sure is that it is very hard to find that a soldier is late for the parade. It's such a abominable scene that he cannot even imagine that he can fail to be in the parade. And this is just in honor of just officers, ordinary officers. How much so should it, should it be? For us 
who are serving the King of Kings. How I pray that it will get to a time now when it reflects on us to know whom we serve. That the Lord God we serve. The Bible says, our God is very great. Our God is not just an ordinary person. He's very great. And sometimes God has privileged me in the middle of the night sometimes. Uh, and I, I look at the stars outside. And when I, when I see the awesomeness of the, on a bright, on a, on a bright uh, evening, on a clear evening or night, and find all the stars. And when I imagine all those stars, I can see from my point of standing, wherever any other place you'd be standing on the earth, you'd see the same number of stars all over spread out, the Milky Ways, the galaxies, you know. And in the midst of that, you see sometimes a star fly out to a bad place and disappear to abyss. And you wonder, surely, the God who made all this, isn't he such a mighty God? I think it's a high time we realize that. And when we know this, we should, show, we should know that for sure it is key, it's very important that we should honor him with our presence more than even we should honor the people of the world. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah 60, the book of Isaiah 60, and verse 7, he says, All the flocks of Kedah shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nan and both shall minister unto thee. They shall come to the they shall come with acceptance on mine, on my altar, and I'll glorify the house of my glory. Uh, Isaiah had this revelation, which was very key and very important, that the soldiers, we are the soldiers, will um, or the, the, the ch these children of God, they, they should gather together. And in that very appointed time, there will be acceptance of God. And he will glorify the house of his glory. God even today is telling us the same. That he will not share his glory with anyone. But where he is glorified, he will glorify. And I found this to be true. When we have had a time of honor unto God, when we find a time of prayer, and maybe prayer and fasting, you find that some of our services are really uh, wonderful, where you feel the presence of God, where you feel you're almost not in control. The Spirit of God is working in you. He is touching you. You find some people crying, some people are shedding tears, some people are lost in the, in the worship because of the presence of God. But when there is no activity going on in the church for a long time, people are saying for Sunday only, and when they come on Sunday, they come late uh, without much honor of God, you find that God also will not honor you. He is a God who is who means what he says and he says what he means. No, if you get late, it means it's a total sure way of showing dishonor unto God. We are dishonoring God as soldiers. And God will not, as it is in the world, and that's why God made some of these things in the world, that we may see and learn of them. We see the discipline that is in, with the soldiers. And then we can learn of them that if we really call ourselves soldiers of the Lord, we should learn a lot the discipline that is with the soldiers. I, I remember one of the members of the church, he said, when an officer tells you that you meet at eight, it should you should understand it by yourself without being told that you should be there at least a quarter of an hour before time. You're not even waiting to be for, it's not at eight, you're leaving your house. And this is common with us. We know that the service starts at 10 and you discover many people, that's the time they're starting their, their, their journey from the, wherever they stay. Maybe you take whichever time you take, but this is the time they're starting their houses. But they know very well the service starts at 10. There is total dishonor of the altar of God. And you cannot call yourself a soldier. You should not uh, courageously sing that I'm a soldier of the Lord. You actually be ashamed to say that you're a soldier of the Lord if you have no honor of the assembly of God. And God is also encourages, encourages us that we should not miss the assemblings, assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some. We should be encouraged to be in the house of God in good time and because we are the soldiers of the Lord. Point number two is that when we make it in time to the house of God and the altar of God, we receive 
acceptance. We receive, um, um, God is happy with us. We receive acceptance. And, and this is true. Let's look at real life. When you have an appointment with someone and that person comes in good time, even not at a minute late, actually comes before time. I, I, this has encouraged me. There was one time my wife was expecting guests at a particular time and some of our close friends, they came even much earlier. And they said, we have come early. But adventure, you may be having some activities we can help you in. You may have some activities that you need help. And I said, this is awesome. These people show real love. And how do you think we would take such visitors? We're not just taking them casually. They are people of honor. They are people who desire honor. They are people who desire approval and acceptance. Brethren, the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah is talking about this approval. And also we find that God is very keen on those people who make it in good time. He will honor us. He is there waiting, clapping his hands and saying, yes, well done, my son. Well done, my daughter. You honor me. That's why you've come. I'm not just come because you, it's, a, it's, not, it's a, not a legality. It's not just because the law. But come to the house of the Lord with love in good time. Make it early in the church is one way of ensuring that we get that acceptance. And who doesn't want to get this acceptance from the Lord? I really desire to receive the acceptance because it's by receiving the acceptance of the Lord that I really enjoy his presence with me. And that's when I would expect even a lot to happen. Signs and wonders following in my life. And, and I recall, uh, and I want to share this with humility. When I got born again, God gave me the desire to be in his house. And I would, I would look forward to the day I'm free that I'd be in the house of the Lord. I remember those days I could desire that every day at least I have opportunity three times to be before the Lord. Maybe early in the morning prayer, praying maybe alone. Lunchtime, I would go for lunch or fellowship. In the evening, I would make sure every day I'm in a place in the evening, a new, new converts, clash, maybe second day, maybe in a home church, third day Bible study, another home church. And I would ensure through the week I'm with the Lord, I'm having an opportunity. I would look forward to a Saturday. On Saturday is when I, I, not, I was not working and I would go to a place of prayer in the house of God and I would pray and pray and repent and call upon the name of the Lord for hours. On Sunday, I would make it early in the morning by seven, by God's grace, and I would get back to the house, rest, and then go back to the church, to the church in the evening. And I would still love to be there. And Cassius, I was part of them. And I can assure you for a fact that it's very, very early in my spiritual life, I saw God use me to, to do miracles, really divine miracles, things you could see like divine healing over someone. And I, I, I saw quite a bit with it happening within my life, especially that time. Uh, brethren, let's not be mocked. God cannot be mocked. Let's not be fooled. We, we, when we show this love and honor for God, he'll honor us. And much will be done in our lives. You'll see his hand, even as we honor him with our presence. Number three, we are saying that by making it to the altar of God in time is the one express way of showing honor to God is one of the best ways to show that I honor God. And this is true. Again, as I was giving an example, when you're called by your master or the king or the president, one of the things to show that you, you have respect for that person is keeping time. I remember one time talking to a driver who was a driver of a vice chancellor in a university. And he would tell, he would tell me how Sometimes the president would order or would call the vice, pres the, vice the vice chancellor of the university to the state house. And you, you tell me there are times they would cruise at very, very high speeds on the highway. They would, they would march. You tell me sometimes you drive the car at such high speed, a Mercedes Benz, by the time he stops, his muscles are tingling because of how fast he has moved. Why was he doing this? It's because of honor of the president. That's that the, the, the man he was carrying, the vice, the vice chancellor, is not late to meet the, 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 the head of state. 
How much more should we do it for our Lord God, who is not just a king of a nation or a president of a nation, but is a king of kings and the Lord of lords. Our God, why should we, why should we get late to meet him? Why should we find ourselves lost into other activities and dishonor our meeting with the Lord. Maybe we can read from the book of Numbers, Numbers 15 and verses that one, what the Lord saying. The Bible says that because he has despised the word of the Lord and has broken his commandment, that soul shall utterly be cut off. His iniquity shall be upon him. The people in the old times, the, the law, uh, in the times of the law of the land, it, there's no jokes about how they managed their time even with God. And and in the book of Numbers, we see that you, that person who has despised the word of the Lord, and one of the ways to show despise or disrespect of the word of God is to fail to follow his commandment. And when we agree as a church that this is a time to meet or God gives an appointment in whichever way, that's a, that's a commandment. When we fail to do that, the Bible says uh, that you shall be utterly cut off. Maybe there are many of us who have already been cut off. God forbid that we would be the people to be cut off. And that's a wake-up call today because God is always open. His arms are open. If you obedient to his word, he's more than willing to get us back to himself because that is his desire that we be with him. In the book of 1 Samuel uh, 2, I had, uh, had mentioned that scripture, 2 and verses 30, the Bible says, Therefore the Lord, the God of Israel, says, I did promise that your house and that your father uh, should go in and out before me forever. But now the Lord says, be it far from me. For those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me shall be high, lightly esteemed. This was a case of Saul. And we could have most likely have heard the story of Saul. He was, he was appointed as king and even anointed for this. But he showed dishonor unto God. And this displeased God. And God said it so, uh, in a, such a serious tone that I honor those who honor me. And those who dishonor me, I shall lightly esteem. And this has not changed, brethren, even today. God will only honor them that honor him. Don't be sure that we could be in a, in a, for, far be it that we found ourselves in a, in a kind of assembly. We imagine that we are the soldiers of God, but God is no longer with us because we just there to please ourselves and just to have fun together and um, just follow some legalities there. But the true fear of God is not seen in us. And God, we cannot fool God. The Bible says in Psalms 139, 13 verses 1, going on to verses 4, that I, I see you in your rest place, when you travel. God is God who sees. He's seeing our every activity. So we cannot fool him. We may even sing and dance, but in our hearts, he sees disrespect. I'm usually amazed when some people come late to church. And they take it so casually, so casually. It's like, it's, it's a normal thing to do. It's like, it's okay, just come. Some will come late and walk all the way from maybe the door at the back. Go walk all the way to the front. And the, when they walk, maybe some, be a lady with a very strong perfume, maybe high heeled shoes that will make all the noise. And they'll make all that noise interrupting everyone to the very front. And then within no time, they are up and down singing and dancing for the Lord. And you wonder, surely, he sees from the without or from within. God is calling us today that we should be a people who honor him truly from our hearts. And one of these is honoring his presence by being in the place of worship in good time and according to to the program that he has said. Because when we make a program, God loves us, it. And he says, if you say we'll be meeting at 10, I'll be there. He keeps his promise. So when we come late, he's already there waiting. Can you imagine when the president in a place and people are coming late and the president waiting? 
people are coming when the president is already there, his ministers, his cabinet ministers, his PSEs and all those people, they're coming late. Can you imagine? And this is what we're doing for the Lord. Now, when we come early to church, it causes the word of God to bear fruit. God honors his word and watches over his word to perform it. The Bible says, when we make it in church in good time, we're saying that the word of God, when which is spoken, will be backed by God himself and it will bear fruit in our lives. As it is given in the, in the, uh, the, the, the sower, uh, the many seeds, some fell on the wayside, some among thorns, among fertile land and all that. We also see that when we make it in time, the word of God will find lodging. It's like when you get in time, you are prepared in the heart. And the word of God will find lodging in our hearts. Where it's a, it, it shall bear much fruit. Otherwise, when we just come, sometimes we are tired, we are in a hurry, we are rushing. We, we are not even sure what has started in the service. We didn't, we didn't start with the others. We just come in the middle of it. it it's most likely the word you receive. Will be like that seed that fell maybe on thorns or on the wayside. After a short while, it is taken away and it has no meaning in your life. In the book of Matthew 13 and verses 22, we, we learn of the of the sower, and he said, He said, He also that received seed among the thorns, a seed that hears the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches shock the word and it becomes unfruitful. How true is this today? Because some of the things that cause us to be late to church is the, the cares of this world. We are more concerned about our comfort. We are more concerned about how we look. You know, somebody will take a lot of time in, in the, in before the mirror. It is more of how you, you look as, as opposed to how I care for my Lord. It, taking a very nice breakfast, organizing yourself and all that very well. It's more of the cares of the world. And what happens is that when those, those, those issues even when you get to church, maybe you're still thinking about home and you're not, uh, you're not really attentive to the Lord. These cares of the world will shock the word of God in you and it will not bear much fruit. The Lord is calling us today, brethren, that we should really desire that we be found in his place of worship with, with undivided attention. Sorry to say we are in an age today of phones. And again, I have found people in church and in the middle of a session, they'll go out of services to answer calls. And I always ask myself, which is this call that is more important than your conversation with the Lord? Which is this call that is so important that it, it means more than being before your God and your creator? Brethren, let me not be cheated. God cannot be mocked. God cannot be fooled by ourselves. It's unfortunate. Some people will even be answering messages in church, you know. Okay, it's like now we've given liberty. The fact that we have Bibles in our, in our phones. It's like we have given people liberty to what to get to our phones. Maybe this is a high time we got physical Bibles so that we, we don't have to go to our phones. Because you find some people in the process and, you know, the media is so keen. It will There'll be messages popping in even that time we were going to the Bible. And before you go to the Bible, you're already there uh, finding uh, some messages popping. And you, there's a temptation any time to maybe look at those messages for sometimes answer, uh, sometimes maybe chat. And it's, it's unfortunate. We should realize who we are and realize that God is seeing and he wonders who has more honor, the one who is calling you from outside or me whom you're serving. And in so doing, God is careful. God will be careful to, uh, to see that uh, all of us together uh, serve him, serve him in sincerity and with a lot of humility. And in so doing, if you do that, we, God will show himself mighty. He's not limited. It's our iniquity that has hindered him from working in our midst, as the Bible says in Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. It's our iniquities, having our own ways. May God help us. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word. You are a serious God, and, but a mighty, loving Father. And I pray again, Lord, that you'll put in us the fear of you. You'll help us to fear you more and more. And bring this liberation to us, who you really are, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Let's learn of the world 
how the disciplined forces serve in their areas of work. And we know that we are more than the disciplined forces. Our levels of discipline should be much higher than even the disciplined forces because we are serving the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Help us, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.